right? Yeah, I'll, I'll begin this. So uh, I'd like to call the uh, meeting of the uh, Countywide Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee to order. Uh, please give your attention to the short video. Jackie, if you could play, play that video now. Thank you. Due to COVID-19, this meeting will be conducted as a Zoom meeting pursuant to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Order N-2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act. This meeting is being live-streamed on the CCTA website. The Chair will call upon members, staff, and other speakers by name. Please speak clearly and state your name before giving comments or remarks. Persons participating via Zoom with their cameras enabled are reminded that their activities are visible to viewers. Members participating by Zoom wishing to speak should physically raise their hand and unmute their mic when called upon. Members should remute their mics when done speaking. Citizens participating by Zoom wishing to speak should use the raise hand feature or dial star 9 if participating via phone, and the chair or staff will call upon them at the appropriate time. Citizens will have three minutes to speak. A 30-second warning will be provided. After three minutes, staff will lower their hand and mute their mic. Participants via phone will be called upon by the last four digits of their phone number. It is requested that public speakers state their names and organization, but providing such information is voluntary. Written public comments received in accordance with the COVID-19 Special Notice for Public Comment Guidelines are printed on the meeting agenda. If authors of the written correspondence would like to speak, they should raise their hand and the chair will call upon them at the appropriate time. All written correspondence received after that and during the meeting will be entered into the record. A roll call vote will be taken for all action items. Thank you for participating in a meeting of the Contra Costa Transportation Authority. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, video. So next we're going to go to a roll call. Jackie, if you could take the roll call. And I see we have a, a few new members here. So if doing roll call of the CB PAC members, just if you do like a quick, you know, either your title or which, uh, I guess, department you work for, for the, for the jurisdiction, that'd be great. All right, committee member Arce. Hi, good morning, present associate planner with the city of Walnut Creek. Thank you. Committee mem member Dugan. Committee member not, Dugan. Not, not here today. East Bay Regional Parks is not represented today. Thank you. Committee member Foster. Good appear, Adam Foster, senior planner, city of Arenda, representing SWAT, the Southwest Area Transportation Committee. Thank you. Committee member Germain. Okay, absent. Committee member Karimi, welcome. Thank you, uh, President. Um, currently in the private sector, um, working at a firm, Wilson Sonsini, as a complex analyst, um, and recently finished graduate school in transportation management. Thank you. Committee member Kishin. Committee member Kishin. Okay, absent. Committee member McWee, welcome. From Wilson Sonsini as a complex analyst. Um, Thank you. Committee member Olson. Morning, Ole Olson here, bicycle end user. I haven't owned a car since 1978. I go everywhere on my bicycle, 5,000 miles a year. I am an advocate for bicycles. Thank you. Thank you. Committee member Riley. Good morning, Corey Riley uh, with the West Contra Costa Transportation Advisory Committee. Thank you. Committee member Riker. Good morning, present Kirsten Riker, the new trans plan representative for the committee. Thank you. Welcome. Vice Chair Pinkham. Um, I'm from uh, Bill Pinkham. I'm from Richmond and uh, your vice chair uh, and also 
participated in the Richmond Bike Ped and several environmental climate oriented uh, organizations. Thank you. And Chair Sarmiento. Hi, Robert Sarmiento, Contra Costa County Transportation Planning. Thank you very much. So we have all members present except for committee members Dugan, committee member German, and committee member Keishan all absent. All right, thank you, Jackie, for that. The uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. Jackie, have you received any public comment? No public comment. All right, thank you. If, if there's anybody attending this meeting who wish to speak during public comment on an item that's not part of the agenda, please raise your hand and uh, staff will call upon you. Any hands raised, Jackie? Um, none that I'm seeing, sorry. Two pages, let me check here. No, no worries. No, I do not believe we have any public comment. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we'll move on to item three. The next item is the approval of the summary of actions from the January 25, 25th, 2021 meeting. Are there any changes, comments from the, et cetera, from the committee? If so, please raise your hand. Any, sorry, Jackie, I can't see the, the list. So anybody raise their hand? I do not see any hands raised. Okay, if any members of the public would like to speak, please, please raise your hand. All right, are there any, any members of the public, Jackie? No, do not. All right, all right, thank you for that. So with, with that, next we'll, um, if you have a, a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. All right, I have a first, I have a second. If it was a first, I'll second. If it wasn't a first, I'll first. All right, so we have first from Bill Pinkham, second from Adam Foster. If uh, Jackie, if you could take the roll call vote, please. Yes. Committee member Arce. Aye. Committee member Dugan. Committee member Foster. Aye. Committee member German. Committee member Karimi. Aye. Committee member Keishan. Committee member McWee. Aye. Committee member Olson. Aye. Committee member Riley. Abstain. Committee member Riker. Abstain. Okay, motion passes unanimously with committee member Riley and Riker abstaining and committee members Dugan, Jermaine, and Keishan absent. Actually, I was gonna say Jackie, I don't think I was asked or, yeah. Oh, did I, I'm sorry. I think a few people there. Chair Sarmiento. Uh, yes. Vice Chair and Vice Chair Pinto. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Jackie. No worries. Thank you. I don't know, Robert. Right. I have to become more visible or something. <laughs> Must be the mask for me today. So. Yeah, the mask. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll move on to item four, uh, regular agenda items. Um, this next item here, 4A, is an introduction of the authority's executive director, Tim, Tim Hale. So I think, Tim, I think I'll pass it up to you or Colin, if you want to start no, that, this item. Yeah, I can, I can take it from here, Chair Sarmento. Thank you very much for the opportunity to allow myself to introduce me or introduce myself to all of you today. Um, my name is Tim Hale. I'm the new executive director for CCTA. And First of all, just really wanted to thank all of you for your continued participation and commitment and working with CCTA on making walking and biking more safer and friendlier in Contra Costa. Um, it's obviously a, a, a tremendous and a very important critical goal for CCTA. Um, and hopefully we've illustrated that through a lot of the commitment and the work that we've done all of you in the past. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I started working at Caltrans in District 7 down in downtown LA 
Um, and I worked there for six years under design. And then I worked for a private consulting firm called RBF and was recently acquired by Michael Baker for about 14 years. And there I was do managing large delivery capital projects, doing ITS projects. And Randy Wasaki reached out to me about 2017 and said, hey, have you ever wanted to work for the public sector? And so uh, in 2017, I was uh, hired at CCTA as the deputy executive director for projects. And in that role, I've worked with a number of you um, in that role on projects, as well as the development of the transportation expenditure plan for Measure J back in 2019. And although it didn't pass, um, I thought it was a great effort and a great opportunity to work and collaborate with you on what the vision of transportation could look like in Contra Costa County. Um, we also, in that role also, I, I, I hope that we were able to demonstrate our role and commitment to projects um, by having a, if, if some of you don't are not aware of this, we do have a quarterly bri uh, uh, bikes, bikes projects coordination meeting, and that's where we invite a few of you uh, from this group here and advocates across the county to talk about uh, our CCTA projects. And really the whole goal behind that was to really get you and get the bike advocates really more involved with CCTA projects early on in the process. So that way, as we're developing these projects, they can better be crafted and responded to the users, which are all of you. Um, sometimes a designer or a project engineer is just looking at this stuff on paper and they might be doing a field visit, but because they're not a bicyclist or, or, or walking in a particular area, they may not know the actual issues that are going on. So it's really important to get feedback from you, all the users. Um, you know, one of the things I am an actual user, um, as some of you know, uh, my, my wife and I only have uh, one vehicle and technically it's my wife's car. And. So I, I actually don't have a car most of the time. And so I usually get around in the county using public transportation and, and, and walking and biking. And so um, I live in Pleasant Hill and I avidly walk, drive, ride my bike to uh, ride my bike to work on a regular basis. Um, right now I've been going to the office every Tuesday. So if you see me on the Contra Costa Canal on Tuesday mornings, you'll see me on there, my bike riding to work. Um, and so I have a huge commitment to walking and biking and and that's been really demonstrated in the goals that I've set forth for the agency over the last or for the for the next for the future. And those goals are essentially this um, really foster the culture of our agency. One of the things that our agency is really known for is for owner being owner of choice, as well as being an employer of choice. And so we want to continue, you know, fostering that culture and working closely with all of you and our partners. Um, our other priority is leverage innovation. So as you all know, we've got a really a reputation of being entrepreneurial, being innovative, taking risks, and we want to continue doing that. We really want to work closely with you. And that's also been demonstrated in some of the projects I think we've worked with you on. For example, on I-80 Central, we worked with some of the developing some of the, the first uh, dedicated uh, walking and biking crosswalks in the county, um, as well as some of the stuff we've been doing at, at State Route 4 Hillcrest. Um, the other, the other uh, goal is drive our future. And this is a, a really important one. Um, we are going to be launching the development of our countywide transportation plan later this year. Um, and that is an important critical aspect of how we want to plan for the future. So this is really taking all the great work that we've been doing, all these studies that we've been doing, the countywide bike and ped plan, the accessible transportation strategic plan, and other studies we've done and really combine that into what we see as the next 30 years of transportation in Contra Costa and use that as potentially a mechanism to generate additional revenue in the county. Um, and my fourth goal is enhance collaboration. And one of the things I really want to do is make sure that we're doing more community engagement, more outreach, more work, working with people like you to really make sure that we're getting our message out and making sure we're, we're de developing and doing the right projects. Um, I am a, a, I'm a fan of performance-based developed projects and Hopefully working with all of you, we can prioritize some of the projects that are in the countywide bike and ped plan and actually implement some of those projects um, in, our, in, in, in our bicycle and trail network. Um, so those are the four goals and a little bit about my vision um, looking towards the future. Um, and so I'll just maybe stop there, answer any questions that you may all have um, about me or about anything that we're doing at CCTA. All right, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, does anybody have any questions for Tim? Questions or comments?
All right, uh, Oli? Yeah, I would like to note in passing that this organization has changed 180 degrees from its first executive director who hated bicycles to now our present executive director who rides one. This, com this organization is moving in the correct direction. Thank you, Oli. All right, Adam. I'll just echo what Oli said a little bit too, Tim. You, you've been very refreshing to work with. Uh, your, your active participation and ideas that are actually changing things are, are very welcomed. And even your St. Patrick's Day suit last week during a public hearing was a friendly reminder that CCTA is in good hands. Thank you, Adam. All right, any other uh, questions or comments for, for Tim? All right, I don't see any hands up. Uh, Jackie, you see any hands raised in the Zoom chat here? I believe uh, member Riley had a question. Oh, all right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say uh, thank, thank you for coming to the group and, and introducing yourself in the new role. Welcome. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, chair, right, I, so Chair Sarmento, if I could just add and just so mm -hmm. closing remarks, you know, looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I do have a strong open door policy. So if you ever need anything, feel free to reach out either through um, our CCTA staff, um, advocates, et cetera. And looking forward to working with all of you. You all represent a really critical comp component of our transportation system, especially now in light of COVID. You know, we're all asking everyone to walk, to walk and bike more. And, you know, this is something we want to do is reduce fatalities and really reach that goal to Vision Zero. And I know all of you are working closely with Colin, all of that as well, in terms of the implementation of that Vision Zero framework. And that's going to be a real critical component of our update to our countywide transportation plan. So, again, look, looking forward to working with all of you. And, again, let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, we'll move on to uh, item 4B, which is review of the complete streets checklist for uh, 10 projects. Each project will be presented by uh, the respective project sponsor. Uh, presenters, please be, please be prepared to share your presentation in the order listed on the agenda. Committee members, please save any questions or comments you may have on a project until the end, till the end of the 10 presentations. We'll do a comprehensive uh, question comment period at the, at the end of the uh, presentations. So looking on the list here, the first project I have, we have here on the list is City of Lafayette and BART, the Lafayette Town Center Pathway and BART uh, Bike Station project. So I think we have BART, both BART and Lafayette staff here on the call. So if they, uh, or Jackie, if you wanna allow them to uh, share the screen and then we can start the, the presentation. Yes, they should have access as co-host, but let me know if you don't. Thank you. Sir Samuel, can I ask one really quick question before we jump into these? Yes. So I, I looked through the projects and I was just wanting some feedback or guidance from staff on what kind of input or direction you're looking from committee members so we can keep that in mind as projects are being presented. All right, thanks Adam. I'll, yeah, I'll direct that question to Colin. And Colin, um, if you could, uh, respond to, to Anna's question about what, yeah, what, what risk feedback are you looking from the CD pack? Yeah. So, uh, so a little bit of background on this agenda. So nine of these projects are from the quick strike program uh, in terms of candidates that CCTA would nominate or has nominated, uh, I believe on March 17th uh, to go to MTC for funding consideration. Um, but in terms of the complete streets checklist review and CBPAC role, uh, so there's an MTC resolution 3765 from 2006 that uh, requires that projects uh, with these certain funding sources get reviewed by the countywide bike and pet advisory committee. And uh, the idea is uh, today that each of those project sponsors will uh, give a, 
a brief overview of the project in terms of where it is in the county, that kind of thing. And then um, the, the comments and questions similar to the one meeting we had in January uh, with uh, six of these uh, similar checklist projects. Um, the idea is to review them from you know, your, your respective member roles uh, in terms of you know, who, who you represent uh, today. We have new members representing uh, youth and seniors with disabilities. Um, and uh, member Riker is, is uh, joining us today as well. Um, so I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, the idea is with the comment matrix that uh, afterward, after the meeting, um, if there's any sort of kind of design changes that need to occur to address some of the comments that have been made, uh, the sponsor would acknowledge that in, in writing, even if it's gonna take a few weeks or a few months to address it. And that way MTC will be able to move forward with uh, considering these projects for uh, funding consider consideration. Um, and so by May, sorry, by March 30th, uh, these final checklists after they've been revised from today's comments will need to be submitted online through the MTC website by the project sponsor. Um, the one project that's not related to Quick Strike is item number six, uh, which, which is a project that was just recently appropriated uh, its final funding from Measure J. All right, uh, thanks Colin. Does, uh, Adam, does that answer your question? Yes, that was very helpful, thank you. All right, thanks. So if uh, there are no other questions, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, Lafayette and Bard staff uh, begin on the, the presentation of this uh, of their project here. Thanks, good morning. This is Heath Maddox with BART Customer Access. I manage bicycle programs with BART. Um, I think I've shared my screen. Can you all see the first slide? Yes. Great, thanks. Um, so um, Farzane Sanders, who's the project manager from the city of Lafayette couldn't join today, but I am joined by Mike Moran as well. Uh, I'm gonna just go through uh, five or six slides to give a, a, an overview of the project. Um, and then, you know, either uh, Mike or myself can answer any questions you have. Uh, so this is for the Lafayette Town Center Pathway and BART Bike Station. Uh, it's a, a joint project between BART and the city of Lafayette. Um, oops. <laughs> sorry. Uh, the goals of the project are to improve the, the bicycle and pedestrian access to Lafayette BART Station. Uh, would be the south entrance on the Mount Diablo Boulevard side. Uh, so to really improve biking and walking access to the station um, and through providing uh, a new bike station, a secure sheltered um, self park uh, bike station and a continuous accessible path of travel to the neighboring community along with improved lighting and um, some landscaping and, and, and uh, overall improved sense of aesthetics. It is a joint project between uh, the city of Lafayette and BART. Um, funding um, was previously uh, through the BART and the city's share of Contra Costa County Measure J funding. Um, because of COVID, there've been some issues around funding. And so we are hoping to get some of this OBAG uh, safe and seamless quick strike funds, which is why we're here today with the, uh, the review of the, the, um, the checklist. Um, so there are two major components to the projects I mentioned. There's the bike station. So BART has been responsible for design uh, of the bike station, which is complete. And the city has led design for the, the pathway plaza and landscaping and public art. The art is not actually a part of, of this project. It'll, it'll be a follow on project. It's funded separately, but you know, it's being considered holistically. Um, and then the city of Lafayette will uh, put the project out to bid and, and lead construction. Um, and, and then once the two components, major components of the project are complete, uh, BART will own and operate and maintain its bike station, um, which will actually be built on uh, Caltrans right of way like the rest of the station. And then the city of Lafayette will 
operate all and maintain all the other um, pathway improvements, which is uh, it's built on property which is leased by BART from East Bay Municipal Utility Districts. Um, so that's the roles and responsibilities. Um, it is a, a high priority project locally um, for the city of Lafayette um, and it's uh, named and consistent with numerous projects, or excuse me, numerous adopted city plans and studies like the specific downtown specific plan, their congestion reduction plan, the circulation element of their general plan. And there's an aqueduct trail study from 2012 and the city's bikeways plan. Um, so this is just a, an aerial uh, showing the project location. This is, um, you can see my cursor on the left. This is uh, Happy Valley Road. This is Highway 24 and the median is, is, the, is the actual BART station. Um, this is the South parking lot. So the project is oriented here at the, the Eastern end of the South parking lot. And currently there's a connection through private development along the creek um, to this shopping area in Mount Diablo Boulevard. And then the connection between the actual BART stairway is basically now, I have some pictures I'll show you in a moment, just kind of a, a, a not very well improved connection through the end of the BART parking lot so that the pathway improvement would, would improve this area here. And the bike station would go here by the stairs. Um, so this is sort of a street view shot um, uh, this is the highway up on top. This is the breezeway that goes underneath uh, the highway and the tracks to, to get to the station entry. And then there are there's a stairway here on the right and a stairway here on the left. And then there's a there's a wheelchair ramp which goes between the two stairways. And then the, the bike station will be placed in this small sort of halfway landscaped area between uh, the, the two stairways. Um, and just a note about the bike station. I'm going to back up to the to the title page again to give you an idea of what it would look like. Um, on the lower right of this title sheet is a, a rendering of, of not the specific um, structure that would be built. I think this one's a little bigger, but um, BART has uh, since 2017, 2018 developed uh, modular bike station designs, which would allow us to, to sort of uh, size uh, appropriately a, a sort of an off the shelf design, depending upon you know, which station and in the local context. Um, and, and so it's, it's been designed for all of our stations. It's just a matter of, like I said, making it the right size. This shows retail on the right, like the station at Lafayette would not have retail, but it would look very similar to this. Um, there are different treatments that can be added to the outside, louvers or glass or perforated metal. The, uh, the treatments, design treatments for Lafayette would be a combination of, of glass and, and perforated metal. It would look something similar to this. Um, so back to existing conditions. This is the view um, at the east end of the south lot at Lafayette looking, looking to the east. Um, so the station would be to the left. Um, and so right now as a pedestrian or as a bicyclist, you have to navigate this, um, this large vehicle turnaround. And, and as you move further um, east, there's a stairway or drops off to the right. And it's just, it's just not, a very, it's not very attractive. And it's not a very pleasant um, it, it, place to walk. I think it's perhaps nominally accessible, but but not not very accessible. Um, uh, so it'll vastly improve that. Um, and here's an overview of the site plan. Um, so just to orient you again, uh, the main station and the freeway are up where this red and yellow line are. Um, here's the bike station between the two stairways. Um, and so this project in this area that's shown with the smaller of the two turnarounds, that's currently occupied by about 18 or 19 parking spaces. So it would convert vehicle parking spaces to a, a new uh, uh, turnaround with uh, decorative paving and, and suspended or a place for suspending public art above it, which would come later, uh, sort of pedestrian plaza. And then this is the existing large vehicle turnaround I just showed you the shot of, which would be repaved and, and given a, a, a decorative pedestrian crosswalk treatment. Uh, the stairs I was mentioning are here on the lower right. These stairs would be removed and, and the slope will be regraded so that it's accessible. Um, 
And let's see what else to mention about the project. As I mentioned, there's lighting throughout. Um, so the lighting will be improved vastly here. It'll be much safer uh, feeling place at night. Um, I think that's maybe all I have for you today. Um, I'll just leave it up here in case um, Mike wants to add anything or in case there are any questions from the, from the committee. Heath, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you, you did great. And uh, th that's the gist of it. So thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Heath. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the agenda, Adam, we'll, we'll um, hold questions to the end after all the uh, presentations so we can get through them. And we'll have, yeah, we'll have some time at the end. Okay, to, uh, thanks. All right, thank you. Let me switch back to the, uh, the agenda here. I just want to see the next item. Next item is from BART. It's the uh, Pittsburgh Bay Point BART Station Access Improvement Project. Improvements Project. And I think we have, is it BART staff here? Is it to, um, uh, Ricky. Okay. Ricky, thanks. Yes. Is my audio okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Thanks. Okay, so this is a short presentation on um, the project. It's the pedestrian, bicycle, and ADA access improvements at BART's Pittsburgh Bay Point Station. So just jumping right into it, this project is the result of a study, um, our North Concord to Antioch, Antioch BART access study from 2018. And of the findings at the station and improvements that needed to be made, this project includes um, the installation of new ramp for ADA and bicycle access at the station entrance. And it, in, it includes four um, bicycle safety and access elements. And that includes uh, bike lanes, improved wayfinding for bicyclists and pedestrians, the installation of bike facilities on the access road to and from Leland, and also the installation of bicycle channels in the station entrance stairway. Uh, Ricky, sorry to interrupt, yes. but before you continue, is there any, because you have how the slideshow uh, currently is, you're showing two slides. Is there any way you can show the one uh, big slide? You, you might have to un unshare, then reshare it again, or, or no, change the, um, the PowerPoint um, viewing options, settings oh. to uh, show. Why is, hold on one second. Yeah, and Colin or, or Jack, if you or anybody else on the on the call here, they know how to uh, make yeah, it. Uh, Ricky, the way you were doing it before was just fine. There was just an option at the top to change the display options. And she has it now. You have it now, Ricky. Yeah, it's full screen now. So. Or Ricky, you had it a second ago. So if you want to just share the screen again, yeah, I think we should be good. Um, wait. Which setting was it again? Colin, do you, you know what setting? Uh, 
I am well, very confused now. I'm sorry. If you click on display settings and click swap, that usually works. It's not working for me. Ricky, this is Kirsten. I think if you hit escape and then escape. go slideshow and take off presenter view, like start slideshow from beginning. Over on the right side where it says use pre presenter view. Can you see? No, go to the right with your cursor. All the way over, there's a little box that says use presenter view. Take that mm -hmm. off. Okay. And then hit from beginning. And it should go. Perfect. Bingo. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, guys. I'm very sorry, sorry. sorry about that, Ricky. No, no worries. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Got it. So, moving along, we have the, um, what did we, oh, right here. So, those are the project elements that, um, are included. And so one of the major elements is um, redoing the BART access road to Bailey Road. And with the existing conditions, we currently have two outbound and one inbound vehicle lanes, a bus only lane on the north side that is no longer in use, um, no bike lanes, and we also have extensive sidewalk repairs that are needed. So this is the BART access road to Bailey Road. And as you can see, you know, looking towards the station, we have the old bus lane that is no longer in use. And we also have, um, as you can see, no bike lanes. And this is the current condition example of the con current conditions as far as the sidewalks goes. And as you can see, it's not very safe for pedestrians or, and then we also have this drainage grate and, um, you know, that's also dangerous for cyclists. And this is actually, this is what we're proposing here on this slide. Um, the very top here, this would be a, a new sidewalk. This would be the installation of a class four bike lane, as well as um, repaving and a potential road diet to reduce the outbound vehicle lanes from two to one. And we would also do some wayfinding here at the intersection for um, bike and pedestrians, bicyclists and pedestrians. So on the actual station, Air in the actual station, our parking lot is um, heavily geared toward vehicles, and we have no bikeways. And um, our bus and shuttle access typically enters from here on Leland Road. And um, fortunately, we do have a one way circulation system, which, as we know, often reduces um, conflict points. And all of this connects to a class two bike lane on Leland Road. What we are proposing um, as far as reconfiguring the parking lot is extending uh, class two bike lanes around this entire circulation point back to Leland Road. And going to um, ADA and bicycle and pedestrian improvements in the actual station area. Here's the existing approach. And this is where we would um, locate the ADA ramp. And these are the existing stairwell, stairways, which do not have um, 
bike channels along the stairwells for easier access for cyclists. And so right here, you can see this is where the ADA ramp would be located. And this is an example of what our um, bike stair channels look like from one of our stations in San Francisco. So cost and funding schedule. So right now our um, costs are estimated at 2.5 million. And initially um, we did apply some years ago to be included in um, the Measure J expenditure plan, but that was not possible. And we did submit for an ATP grant, which we did not receive, but um, we do have $1 million in matching funds from BART Measure RR. And so the planning is complete and environmental should be done by August, designs February 22. Right of way at utilities should be done at around the same time. Construction will begin in spring of 23 and conclude in summer 23. And that is it for the presentation. All right, thank you for that presentation, Ricky. If you could uh, stay, we'll have questions at the end. Um, we'll move on to uh, project number three, City of Concord, East Downtown Concord, PDA, Access and Safe Routes to Transit Improvements Project. See here who I'm not sure who who's going to be speaking on this item, but uh, yeah, there's Concord staff available. Uh, thank you, Robert. This is Eddie with RJA. Uh, I'll be presenting okay. on behalf of uh, City of Concord, and I'm All right. trying to thank put you. up our slide right now. Can everybody see the slide on the screen? Yes, I get, I get to see it. Okay, great. Um, this, is, um, this is the project for East Downtown Concord PDA access and safe route to transit. Um, my name's Eddie Seal with RJA. We're the civil engineers consultant for uh, City of Concord on this project. Uh, with me today is uh, Dominic Carucci from RJA as well, and uh, um, Bernard and, and Ryle with City of Concord, um, CIP manager. Um, this project um, is to uh, implement the city master uh, bicycle and pedestrian uh, master plan goals and objective to uh, close sidewalk gaps, as well as uh, introducing new sidewalk and uh, bicycle accessibility uh, to the downtown uh, core area from the neighboring uh, communities and residences um, to access uh, BART, uh, downtown commercial, uh, schools, parks, uh, et cetera. The project consists of um, as I mentioned, uh, introduce a new sidewalk to close uh, sidewalk gaps between the neighboring communities in downtown, um, as well as introducing the uh, bike routes, uh, markings and signage um, to uh, enhance the uh, bike connectivities. The project uh, consists of seven different segments. Um, first, segment would be, uh, if you follow the cursor on the screen, 
would be uh, the Alameda, essentially from Clayton, around the Alameda to six streets. Um, that this segment of the project includes new sidewalk as well as bike lane striping, as I mentioned previously. The second part of the project would be from, uh, Sixth Street from um, the Alameda up to Willow Pass Road and moving across the screen. Um, Parkside Drive would be another segment. Um, the improvements will consist of, again, sidewalk and the bike lane improvements from the Alameda up to uh, Willow Pass Road. In addition, there are three different segments, um, sidewalk closure um, to the north of the uh, area that I just described would be on Parkside Drive. There's a segment where we are adding new sidewalk here on Parkside Drive, just south of uh, Salvio Street. Likewise, um, this portion of Valencio Street where we are adding sidewalk to again, close the missing sidewalk so that we can provide continuous sidewalk connectivity. Um, and in addition, this location as well. Um, this is a uh, sort of a large view of the 6th Street, the Alameda and Parkside uh, Drive improvements um, that we were looking at. And um, this particular segment, the Alameda we will be adding uh, approximately uh, 1,100 feet of sidewalk, um, which, which would be the red dashed line you see on the screen here. This would be new sidewalk. Um, likewise here, just south of Cordova on the west, I'm sorry, east side of the Alameda, as well as bike link uh, stripings and uh, signage on the Alameda. On 6th Street, Similarly, we're in, introducing new sidewalk along the west side of 6th Street, all the way up to uh, Willow Pass Road and um, bike linked uh, striping and improvements. In addition, we are um, doing a signal modification at the intersection of Conquer and 6th Street to add pedestrian uh, push buttons. Um, and upgrading this uh, particular intersection with the, with the traffic signal as well as uh, pedest uh, pedestrian crosswalks. On Parkside Drive, um, similarly, we are introducing new sidewalk on the east side of Parkside. Um, there is an existing sidewalk at the north lead portion um, um, of Parkside Drive. We're closing the gap by connecting the new sidewalk at this location and, and taking it all the way down to Conquer and uh, uh, introducing new signage, uh, uh, bike lane signage and striping. And this is a um, further enlarged view of the Alameda. Um, the uh, existing sidewalk currently exists on the east side of uh, the Alameda from Clayton Avenue up to approximately this locations. This project will continue the sidewalk uh, through this portion of the Alameda uh, by introducing sidewalk, driveway, ADA compliant driveway, as well as curb ramps. This will allow us, the location that we we're just looking at is down, right, this, lo um, this location here, kind of off this uh, page here. This will allow us to connect the sidewalk to the northerly side of uh, the Alameda continue with the existing sidewalk and new sidewalk similarly being installed on the north side of the Alameda all along um, the Alameda, continue across all the way to six trees as we were looking at at the uh, larger slide. Um, this particular improvements will include um, ADA compliant driveways, curb and gutter, um, all the way through and curb ramps at intersections and connect the new sidewalk to 6th Street, as well as providing um, bike lane striping, uh, sharing, share bike lanes uh, marking, as well as the signage uh, to, uh, to accommodate a class three bike lane. Um, the challenge we have with this project is that there is no existing sidewalk on the south side. There's uh, currently, um, this project will provide the connectivity along the north side. Uh, as I mentioned, the challenge 
for this project is the um, limited space that we have relative to the current right of way as well as um, the um, current improvements from the public meetings and stakeholders uh, meetings that we have had previously uh, with the neighboring residents. Um, their concerns is uh, parking in front of their projects. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, their, uh, their uh, residences. Um, that restricts us from uh, being able to widen this project more to create uh, perhaps a dedicated bike lane. Uh, similarly, with existing improvements, where a lot of the front yard improvements, uh, existing trees, um, sort of prevent us from further widening this project. Um, so that's the challenge th that we face. Um, and um, the solution we come up with due to the volume, uh, lower volume of the residential streets, uh, we're proposing a class three bike lanes with uh, uh, a share lane biking, um, share uh, share bike lane marking as well as the uh, signage. Um, similar situations on um, Parkside Drive where we have ex existing sidewalk on the west side, um, missing sidewalk between Concord Boulevard and uh, at approximately this point on Parkside Drive, uh, the project will close the gap with the new sidewalk. Likewise, introduce new uh, bike lane marking and signage. Next location of the project, 6th Street. Um, similarly, we're introducing new sidewalk, approximately um, about three, 200 feet or so south of Willow Pass Road, all the way across 6th Street. Continue down to the Alameda, where it connects to the new sidewalk that we just looked at and creating parallel parking for the residents, uh, share lane uh, biking, uh, symbols, signage, as well as uh, pedestrian connectivity. As I mentioned, there are three different locations um, in addition to um, the improvements that we just looked at that we, uh, as part of this project, are uh, introducing new sidewalk. Uh, curb ramps, um, as well as driveways to uh, link this uh, missing sidewalk so that continuous sidewalk uh, is provided uh, through uh, this neighborhood. Um, at this location, which we call location six, a uh, proposed sidewalk coming across here with the missing sidewalk um, at this location and this location. And I'm gonna go to the next slide uh, with a, a little bit of slightly enlarged view where you can see uh, some of the improvements. This is location um, number three, where we introduced new sidewalk, uh, curb and gutter, um, driveways to uh, connect the missing sidewalk from this location to um, Salvio Street. This would be a similar situation where we introduce new sidewalk um, to fill in the gap, introduce new curb ramps, And lastly, um, the existing sidewalk at this location stops approximately this location. We're continuing with new sidewalk and connects to the existing park that is located right here, uh, again, to uh, accommodate for uh, pedestrian connectivity. And this will conclude my presentation and uh, feel free to ask us any questions at the end. Th thanks for that presentation, Eddie. Yeah, we'll hold questions to, to the end here. So thanks for that presentation. We'll move on to item four, City of Richmond, uh, San Pablo Avenue, complete streets, phase two from La Porta Road to Hilltop Drive. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Patrick Phelan from the City of Richmond. Um, thanks for having us here today and considering this project, San Pablo Avenue Complete Streets Phase 2, or as like we like to call it, SPACs Phase 2. Um, here is the location of the project in uh, West Contra Costa County. Um, uh, mainly, this project is completely in the City of Richmond, but it's very close to the City of San Pablo border. This project is the result of a joint study between the cities of San Pablo and the city of Richmond. 
uh, back in 2013. Um, and it's uh, been very useful to have this um, study and all of the public outreach to work with as we try to complete this project. <clears throat> Here is the study area. Um, a small bit of the city of San Pablo on the south side of the project and going up to Hilltop Drive um, in Richmond. Uh, this is a hillier part of town, so we're dealing with a big slope here. Um, there previously were no bicycle facilities nor pedestrian facilities in this whole project area. Um, this map shows um, a sidewalk gap all along San Pablo Avenue um, from River Street to Hilltop Drive and also on Robert Miller Drive going up to Hilltop Mall. Um, the Hilltop Mall neighborhood was, was, is more, a more modern part of Richmond and unfortunately was built, um, I feel like, in the peak vehicle um, style of development. So that's what we're dealing with. Um, on this section of San Pablo Avenue, um, the existing conditions are on the top of this screen and um, the recommended concept from the study is on the south. Um, so it's um, somewhat simple of adding a buffered bike lane on each side and building a sidewalk on the left side. Um, the same number of vehicle lanes remain um, and there are some uh, medians, concrete medians and left turn pockets. So here again is the, the, um, the project limits. Um, from La Puerta Drive, which is unfortunately not labeled. It's a little stub leading to Española Drive in San Pablo and going up to Hilltop Drive. And uh, you can also see that uh, Hilltop Mall, the purple area is right there. Hilltop Lake Park is nearby. Um, there's actually several schools now, charter schools in this area around Hilltop Drive. And then um, it's rather a short bit over to the Richmond Country Club where you can also eventually get to the Bay Trail. This is a bit of a wider view. Um, one thing that of course really need to stress is that this project would be uh, the completion of a previously designed project. So the green stretch here is what we called phase one. That was built in 2019. Um, uh, the city of San Pablo, uh, uh, did the, this construction project, and so the phase two would be for Richmond. Um, <clears throat> and this it would be a, a really important gap closure and extension of the original project. The original project was over budget and had to be truncated at um, La Puerta Drive, so kind of only built about half of the project. Uh, Here's a little example of the striping plan. So uh, a nice buffered bike lane with high visibility green block treatments at the conflict points, um, a, a new sidewalk along the west, which is the top of this, um, uh, ADA compliant curb ramps, and some nice medians and turn pockets. <clears throat> and then here's another um, bit from the plans um, showing the intersection with Hilltop Drive, where there would be more pedestrian improvements and some signal changes. And um, here is a couple Google Street View images showing current conditions. Um, the bottom image is about at the northern end of the completed project at La Puerta Drive. This is the brand new traffic signal. You can see the new sidewalk on the left and the buffered bike lanes on both sides. Uh, there's a bunch of new street lights here as well. And the top is just a little bit further north along San Pablo Drive. Um, and it, I feel like this highlights um, what a difficult situation this is, um, uh, difficult slash dangerous. Um, there's, there's no sidewalks. Um, it's hilly, so there's often not even anywhere to walk on the sides of the road. And um, this would be um, wonderful to complete this project and connect it up to Hilltop Drive. Those are all my slides. All right, thank, thank you, Patrick. Uh, you know, I'm looking, look at the agenda here. It looks like, you know, City of Richmond is the next project. Are you, would you be presenting that one as well? Uh, my colleague Tofik is going to present, but I will do the slides. All right. 
Thank you. Yeah, so we'll move on to project number five, the City of Richmond 13th Street Complete Streets Project. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tofi Halabi. I'm currently serving as the Interim Director of Public Works for the City of Richmond. I'm very pleased uh, to be invited to this important meeting this morning to present to you the case for the City of Richmond's 13th Street Complete Streets Project. I'm going to set my timer here. I'm committed to giving a presentation that is shorter than eight minutes. <laughs> Um, so sim similarly with our previous presentation, uh, the Rumrell Boulevard 13th Street project is a combined collaborative effort between the city of San Pablo and the city of Richmond. Uh, this is the cover page of the report that was published for the Rumrell Boulevard 13th Street Complete Streets project. The city of San Pablo has secured funding for the construction phase of the project that is within the city of San Pablo and the city of Richmond is seeking funding for the portion of the project that is within the city of Richmond. Uh, and as you can see, this was a collaborative effort with many um, designers and agencies. Next slide, please. Uh, the project location is in an urban area in West Contra Costa County. Uh, not not too far from the, the other project that was presented a moment ago. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the city of Richmond's portion of the project highlighted in yellow. It is 13th Street on the north uh, end is Costa Avenue at the city limit with the city of San Pablo. At the south end is the intersection with Harbor Way and Pennsylvania Avenue. This is classified as a minor arterial street in the California road system. And the speed limit on 13th Street is 35 miles per hour. Next slide, please. Now this project shows the gap, the important gap that the 13th Street project will close. Uh, the 13th Street project is highlighted in yellow. To the north is the city of San Pablo uh, Rumroll uh, Complete Streets project. Uh, my understanding is it'll go into the construction uh, this year, this calendar year. Uh, immediately to the south and to the west of our 13th Street project is another bicycle and pedestrian project called the Yellow Brick Road project. And for connectivity purposes, I wanted to highlight the following. Uh, we have the Richmond Greenway, which is an east-west uh, class one facility for bicycles and pedestrians, the Richmond Greenway. Uh, connects uh, several very important uh, nodes. Um, to the far west, which is not shown here, is the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. Uh, south of, of the Yellow Brick Road project is the Richmond Ferry. And uh, roughly in the middle of this uh, plan here is the Richmond BART station. Richmond Greenway also connects with the Ohlone Greenway, which leads to the El Cerrito, El Cerrito del Norte. Uh, uh, BART station, and then the Ohlone Greenway, which can take you into Albany and Berkeley. So it is a critical gap closure um, heading south, west, and east. And heading north, uh, Rumrill will be a connector to the San Pablo Avenue Complete Streets project as well, near Contra Costa College, uh, Hilltop Mall, and residential areas as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this project, one of the important elements of this project is I mentioned it's an urban area. We have two vehicular travel lanes in each direction. We have existing sidewalks, but it's not, it's not a pedestrian friendly project. Uh, one of the important parts of this project is a lane reduction. We're going from four lanes to two lanes. Um, and we're also inserting a uh, protected uh, bicycle facility in either direction of travel. So this shows a schematic of what the plan would look like. We would have on-street parking. We would maintain parking, just eliminate uh, one, one vehicular travel in in each direction. Next slide, please. Uh, so there is an extensive uh, the public outreach portion of the, the plan that we mentioned earlier. Uh, there were three major community workshops. One was a walk and design workshop where we invited members of the uh, community, residents and business owners to walk along the corridor uh, with staff uh, to observe and document the conditions. We also had a complete streets design workshop uh, where uh, it was an educational opportunity for community members to participate in um, how to, you know, the how to design the Complete Streets project, and finally, uh, preferred design workshop. So, my my point in mentioning all this is, 
This is really emphasizing um, pedestrian improvements, bicycle improvements, and transit improvements for the local residents and uh, business owners along this corridor. There was also a technical advisory committee and uh, direct outreach to the business owners as well. That was very important. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's uh, some renditions from the plan. Uh, so this is likely a, a before and after. We haven't done the after, obviously. So we have the conditions, the current conditions in the first picture on the top and the future rendition of what it would look like uh, post-construction on the bottom. Next slide, please. Uh, we do have a 30% plan that was produced at the time uh, that the plan was published. Uh, next slide, please. And this shows the, the urban nature, you know, you see residences, businesses. So the main, the main uh, uh, points here are, we, we were successful in getting a Measure J um, Transportation uh, for Livable Communities grant. Uh, we are currently in the design phase. We've completed about 10 or 15% of the design. We are looking for um, construction funding uh, initially, we submitted for construction funding under the OBAG-2 coordinated call for projects. However, due to the downturn in the economy, we're, we are seeking construction funding from elsewhere. Uh, and the main points of this project are the following. Safer pedestrian crossings, separated bicycle facilities, traffic signal modifications, a reduction in the number of travel lanes, bus stop improvements, streetlight improvements and bioretention uh, bio retention facilities and landscaping. And um, at this time, we respectfully uh, submit our request for the Quick Strike federal funding. Our project schedule is ideal, uh, actually matches up perfectly with the, with the Quick Strike federal funding. Um, that brings me to the end of my presentation. I thank you all for your attention. All right. Uh, thank you for that presentation. We'll move on to project number six, uh, City of San Pablo, Rum Rail Boulevard, Complete Streets, phase two project. All right, thank you. Um, and thank you, Tafik, for your introduction of the project because you basically cover about half of my material, so I'll be able to keep mine short. Um, so the Rum Rail Boulevard, Complete Streets project, as Tafik was saying, is a, a result of a lot of work um, and collaboration between the two cities. And um, as Colin mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, um, this presentation is a bit of a housekeeping item since uh, this project is um, getting a separate allocation of funds. It is not seeking uh, quick strike funding. Uh, so a little bit of background. This is a uh, high uh, crash area for San Pablo, I'm sure as uh, CCTA is noticing from the results of the Vision Zero uh, analysis, there um, is a history of crashes on Romero Boulevard and it was identified as a, an area needing significant safety improvements. So uh, this proposal includes a lot of the classic elements of a complete street project. So the road diet, as Tafik was mentioning, going from four total travel lanes to two, one in each direction, uh, class four bike lanes, um, in some cases protected by bioretention facilities, in some cases protected um, the striping and channelizers, numerous sidewalk improvements, um, bus stop improvements, um, etc. In total, the project extent covers about one and a half miles. Um, so the entire stretch of Rumrail Boulevard within the city of San Pablo. So I, for that reason, it's a substantial project. I won't be covering uh, detailed plans for the entire stretch, but I've included that in the packet um, for this presentation. Uh, I'm just gonna highlight a couple of key design areas. Um, so for this packet, for reference with this packet, there's the complete streets checklist at the beginning then the vicinity map. So Rumrel Boulevard is this uh, red stretch. Um, so that's, that's the stretch in the city of San Pablo. Zoomed in, um, Rumrel Boulevard in San Pablo goes from San Pablo Avenue on the northernmost extent to Costa, um, as Tafik was saying, and that's on the, the southernmost 
Makes sense. So this project will cover the full stretch of Brumrell Boulevard. Some of these uh, <laughs> images look pretty familiar um, since they're drawing from that same report um, that was a collaboration uh, between City of Richmond, City of San Pablo, um, and, and the community. This is an example of some of the improvements um, that will take place. So um, this is Rumrill Boulevard at the intersection of, with Rumrill Road in the city of San Pablo. Right now, this is a stretch where there actually are class two uh, bike lanes on Rumrill. It's part of a short stretch that does have bike lanes, but they are just the, the class two, so no additional protection. Um, and vehicle speeds are quite high on Rumrell. So um, this will be transitioning to a class four with a, a buffered, striped buffer that will have um, physical delineators separating. Um, and an, uh, an additional cross section does show an example of where the bike lane will have uh, bio retention and parking protection. And that will actually also uh, be present at certain segments of the striped delineator protection. So this cross section shows Rumrell Boulevard at Bush Avenue, also a location within the city of San Pablo. Um, so you'll notice there's also going to be planting of new uh, street trees. So we'll be um, planting in total about, a, about 250 street trees um, in this project. Many of them will be new. Um, we will be adding um, improved crossing. So this is a mock-up of the proposed improvements at intersection with road 20 um, in San Pablo Avenue. So there'll be shortened crossings that are achieved through curb bulb outs. Um, of course, also making sure that there's striping present to maintain the bicycle uh, path through those intersections. Um, in some of the intersections, there will be median um, waiting areas for pedestrians. Um, and then in some cases there won't be since the, the crossings will be substantially shorter. Uh, there will also be improved uh, lighting uh, on Rumrill and um, rapid rectangular rapid flashing beacons, which will improve uh, pedestrian safety with the crossing. So there'll be five new RRFBs as part of this project. Um, so again, another example of the proposed improvements, um, and this time at the intersection with Sutter Avenue, also in the city of San Pablo. Um, let's see, looking through notes, that's high level um, overview right now regarding status. So we have uh, actually these plans are out for bid, construction bid. Um, Construction is anticipated to start this year with completion of this project, um, hopefully end of 2022. So that's very exciting. Actually soon we'll be able to ride safely uh, down the stretch of Rumrill, um, as well as experience the overall improvements um, in that, in uh, the pedestrian experience. If you're curious at poking through any of the, the detailed design drawings, um, there's 11 pages of striping improvements that you can see how the bike lane um, striping improvements will work. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to the next presenter. Happy to take questions later. All right, thank you for that presentation, Sarah. We'll move on to project number seven, City of Danville, uh, Diablo Road Trail slash Diablo Road Circulation Improvements Project. And we have Danville staff available. Yes, thank you, Chair Sarmiento. This is Andy Dillard. I'm the transportation manager with the town of Danville. I'm also joined by Nader Salama, who's uh, our uh, associate engineer, uh, who's working on this project as well. So thanks for uh, your time this morning and uh, or afternoon, I guess. And uh, I'll take you through uh, some quick slides here on our project. Okay, so the Diablo Road Trail project. Uh, this is a project that has been in the works for the town for several decades. And uh, going back to the uh, 
the original trails master plan developed in 1980 that in the 1980s the town uh, identified uh, this diablo road trail project um, as a future connection um, from the diablo road corridor in the downtown area out to east anvil and the gateway to mount diablo state park so a lay of the land uh, as you see here a map um, the project area here uh, is notated um, with the solid line and the dotted line here is the project area and this is what's known as the diablo road corridor and it stretches all the way from uh, the i680 uh, interstate all the way out to blackhawk uh, this section of the Diablo Road corridor is classified as a minor arterial, carries about 14,000 vehicles per day, uh, has a speed limit of uh, 35 miles an hour, uh, 85th speed, uh, percentile speed of about 40 miles per hour. You can see the project area in relation to Dan downtown Danville, which is just west of the 680 corridor. And then to the east is the regional destination of Mount Diablo State Park. So a little bit of background, uh, the, the town has really uh, been investing in complete streets and investments in pedestrian and bicycle fills, facilities. And this is an example of a project that was just completed last year, funded in part with TDA grants. That's just to the west of the Diablo Road Trail project. And this is a bicycle uh, improvement project that leads directly to the existing trail segment that's gonna serve the new, tris, new trail segment. So a uh, little bit of background. This is a, a bit of a complicated project and then there's a lot of moving, moving parts. Um, as I said, it's been in the works for some 30 years now, but the project was contingent upon the town receiving the, the dedicated the land uh, and easements to build the trail. And in 2018, uh, the town approved the McGee Preserve uh, housing project, which allowed uh, this project to go forward. And what that McGee Preserve approval does was it grants the, the land entitlements for the town uh, to build, uh, maintain, and own the trail along the Diablo Road corridor. And to the right here, you can see the, um, you can see where the future McGee Preserve development is. And, and again, here's the uh, gateway to Mount Diablo State Park. So this is an example of the existing trail segment. To the left, you see the Barbara Hale Trail, which is an existing half mile class one paved trail. Uh, moving further to the east is the, the subject project, uh, is a 0.9 mile uh, class one trail that will go along the south side of the Diablo Road corridor. And then to the east is uh, another new trail segment uh, that's gonna be built by the developer as part of the McGee Preserve. And that's, I believe, about a 0.7 mile trail segment that will ultimately go out to the Blackhawk Road corridor. This is another look at the project. This is kind of looking south. So if you were to do an aerial, you're kind of turning yourself around looking south up the hillside. So over to the right here, you can see where the, the Barber Hale Trail is, the current Diablo Road Trail. It will cross and will go up a hillside. It will travel along the Diablo Road corridor and link up with uh, the new uh, McGee Preserve Trail. Uh, so what this map or what this slide represents is a, a, a series of options that the, the town looked at as part of a feasibility study that was completed in 2018. We looked at several alignments that consisted of uh, um, um, the pathway going up a hillside. So th there was a lot of challenges, uh, potential challenges with construction of that. But we took a closer look at that and what came out of that feasibility study. And we found that uh, it would be doable to, to build a trail directly adjacent to the Diablo Road uh, corridor. And it's gonna really take out a lot of the slope in the hillside of, of that, uh, those, uh, those alignments. So much, much more attractive option. And this is currently what we're, what we're uh, moving forward with. And uh, we're currently, um, in design and environmental, it's going uh, parallel. And I'd like to point this out here. Uh, this is a crossing. This is where the trail, uh, existing trail will cross over to the, to the new trail at the Diablo Road um, Fairway Drive intersection. 
This is another look at it. Uh, what we're proposing is a, a hawk system um, for the crossing, and then it would proceed uh, to jump over to the south side um, of Diablo Road. I will tell you that uh, last week we have a preliminary um, funding approval for TDA funds to construct the hawk signal. Uh, of course, that still needs to be uh, approved at several levels before it's official, but uh, uh, we think we have the funding procured for the crossing treatment. So we're seeking now the funding for the uh, the trail segment. This is a this is a kind of a, a really busy slide here, but it gives you kind of a, a a feel for what we have to deal with to build the trail along the south side of the road. So looking from west to east, where my cursor is, uh, this is where the trail will cross. It'll go along the south side of Diablo Road and continue up the hillside. Here you see a creek, which is something that we have to deal with, but uh, our engineer who is on the line here, Natter, um, he's, he's found a solution that's gonna uh, allow us to build this with uh, pretty much staying out of the creek. Um, you can see that there is some tree removal required um, along um, Diablo Road, uh, but uh, most of the trees are, are um, at risk or they're smaller diameter trees. And then finally on the far right side, you can see the slide, the photo, um, there's a culvert there and the path will go along the top of that culvert crossing. Um, here's another uh, uh, in-depth look at that culvert and that crossing. So uh, kind of tail of the tape here, total length of the trail will be about 4,500 feet. Uh, it will have a, the crossing with a hawk system. Um, it's, it will be an eight foot wide paved pathway. Um, and uh, we will be using what's called mechanically stabilized earth MSE walls to stabilize the creek bank and allow us to stay out of the creek bank to build. And the estimated cost for the project is approximately $4 million. And right now we have about a $2 million funding gap, but that's still up in the air as well because part of this project is funded with Measure J. So um, until we know the, the full story of what our Measure J funding is gonna be, it will tell us what our, what our um, shortfall is. Uh, the funds that we're seeking are all for construction. We do have local money already uh, to the tune of about a million dollars for the design and environmental. So with that, I will end the presentation. All right, thank you for that presentation, Andy. We'll move on to uh, project number eight, City of Pleasant Hill, Contra Costa Boulevard improvement project from Viking to Harriet. We have uh, Pleasant Hill staff available here, please. Oh, yes, uh, this is Mario Marino. Hi, Mario. Yeah, feel free, uh, feel free to start. Okay, can you see this? Can you see my screen? Just wanna make sure. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, th uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Mario Marino. I'm the city engineer uh, for the city of Pleasant Hill. I've been with the city for over 20 years. Um, I'm a little short staff, my traffic engineer um, up to the city of Fremont. And so I'm taking on some of these responsibilities. So, um, so bear with me if you would. Um, <clears throat> as we talked about the, uh, the the project is, is in the city of Pleasant Hill, um, and it's one of a major priority projects for the city. Um, uh, the project is, is one of multiple phases that we've done since we started back in 2008, I believe. Um, and what we call is phase five. You can see here in the graph, um, it is a section that's about a half a mile long. It's um, it, it will close a gap uh, between the, the downtown or the southern limits of the city to the northern, northern limits of the city. Um, it is characterized by a number of, of, of commercial areas, which is the kind of the meat and potatoes of the city and kind of our, our commercial corridor. Uh, there's a Diablo, Vista, a Diablo Valley College uh, with a population of about 20, three, 24,000 students and, and faculty when it is fully functional. Also, we have some other, um, a, a college adjacent to it, right to the south and some other uh, 
some other elementary schools that uh, this corridor feeds. In addition, uh, we do have a PDA, which is what we call the uh, DBC PDA right here to the north. And this project would also link or close the gap to the PDF to the south, which is uh, our downtown bus Kirk PDA. Uh, we do have uh, BART, which is further south, about a half a mile south of uh, the downtown area. So uh, this, this would definitely provide a corridor and a connection for this very important arterial in the city. Um, Contra Costa Bill Bart was built back in the 1970s as, as most typical roadways back then. Uh, you could see it's just characterized by wide roads and, you know, wide lanes and, and um, this court, this section does have sidewalks, but no bike lanes or facilities, um, poor lighting, landscaping, and um, you can see here, it's, it's just one of your typical um, corridors. Um, here what we do have is also, uh, it's characterized in Contra Costa Boulevard and Taylor and Willow Pass Road by, um, it has those uh, free right turn pockets in all four uh, corners and which makes it very difficult for pedestrian site visibility and other hazards. So we're trying to improve that. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, um, this is part of a multi-phase project. Um, the last of the phases being this phase five. Um, the city has been working since 2008 on this project and trying to enhance the corridor. Those for, that are familiar with the, uh, this section of, of Contra Costa Boulevard, there has been a number of enhancements that have been very well welcomed by our city council and the community. And what we've developed is, is what you see here is We've gone from the standard roadway section, uh, unimproved, to what uh, we have as a template is now enhanced lighting, enhanced pedestrian uh, facilities, enhanced uh, landscaping, enhanced um, transit facilities with shelters, um, enhanced crosswalks, ADA improvements, uh, signal improvements, and trying to make this corridor completely uh, something that is inviting to our residents. And um, I think we've been successful in doing that. Um, <clears throat> one of the main concerns and problems with um, that we're trying to address safety concerns is, as you hear, see here is this, um, the intersection of Taylor and Contra Costa Boulevard, Willow Pass Road. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, the free right turns at all four intersections or all four corners of the roadway. Um, what we're trying to do with the project is create now standard right turn pockets um, or right turn movements in order to reduce the pedestrian um, lengths and enhance the overall uh, operations of the corridor. Um, this is one of our main objectives with the project. Um, we have some conceptual drawings here of what that would look like um, and how that would benefit overall the, the operations of the corridor. Another concern that we have is in the southbound uh, direction as you're heading from uh, Harriet, I'm sorry, from uh, DVC South, uh, there's a heavy turning movement that occurs uh, in the southbound direction, as a lot of a lot of um, vehicles are trying to access uh, 680 in the north and southbound direction, which is right off of the Willow Pass Road. So, uh, one of the things that we consistently have um, a number of collisions and and um, concerns with is this le double left turn pocket here. It, uh, it always, um, it seems to spill over into the lanes and creates uh, some hazardous conditions there. Also, it creates a problem here at Allen Drive where uh, vehicles trying to access the residential side street have, um, have, have we've, we've had a number of uh, broadside uh, collisions there because of that. Uh, the site visibility is, 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 is not, um, not good. So one of one of the recommendations is that 
we would install an additional half signal here at this, this intersection um, as one of the, the, the signal improvements for the corridor. Uh, again, uh, this, this corridor is one of our busy corridors and, and uh, bus service routes. There's a number of bus service routes that service this. Um, and we have, um, as shown here on the slide, uh, service providers or uh, transit that basically serves not only Walnut Creek BART, but also other facilities in Concord BART. So we have a number of transit um, routes that uh, would be serviced and, and improvements that we would basically uh, um, provide along this corridor. Um, in summary, what we have is um, this project has been on the books for a while. We did have funding that is uh, due to the pandemic, uh, those funds were, um, and um, those funds are no, no longer there. Um, we do, the city council did approve uh, some design funds. Uh, we're currently working on the design. Um, we're going out to RFP. We anticipate that the uh, design of this project with the local funds will be complete in early 2022. We currently do not have any construction funds for this project, uh, but we're hoping that uh, during this process and during um, uh, this review that we will be eligible for, for potential funding. And um, so uh, with that, that concludes my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Mario. Yeah, well, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll bring them up at the end of the uh, presentations here. So let me move back to the agenda here. We have two more projects. We have uh, the next project here, City of Pinole, New Signal at Appian Way and Marlesta Road project. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about our project. I'm going to introduce Robert Stevens, he's uh, our consultant, sure working on uh, the preliminary engineering and design for this project. And we'll take questions after the presentation. Thank you, Misha. Thank you everybody uh, for learning about our project here in Pinol. So Pinole is in Western Contra Costa County, as all of you know. Um, our specific project is on Appian Way at the intersection of Marlesta Road here shown with the orange circle. A couple of important community markers are Shannon Elementary School on the west side of Marlesta, as well as Pinole Middle School. Dropping down into the intersection, uh, Appian Way is a major arterial roadway within the city that serves about 16,000 vehicles per day. Uh, its posted speed is 35 miles per hour. Uh, Marlesta Road has an ADT of about 2,000 and a, post, and a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour. It's important to note that from uh, heading north on Appian Way, it slopes very steeply down. Here are a couple of photographs of the intersection. You can see the, the steep sloping street. You can also see that we have a Westcat bus stop right on the intersection of Marlesta Road on each side. Again, the steeping slope road. Uh, over the last five years, there were several accidents, two of which involved pedestrians with, against vehicles. Uh, the community is very interested in improving safety at this intersection, and the City of Pinole's Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Commission uh, actually uh, asked the staff to explore the construction of a signalized intersection. So here's a concept of the signalized intersection. Uh, it, provides four legs of uh, signalized pedestrian access. In addition to the signal, it includes both bulb outs, uh, extensions of the class two bicycle lanes to the intersection, ADA accessible ramps, as well as high visibility crosswalks. The city's completed a conceptual cost estimate for this. Uh, it's about $475,000 using 2021 dollars. And then finally, uh, the city's next steps, uh, currently finalizing the warrant analysis. Uh, we'll be coordinating uh, with our local pedestrian advisory committee on the specifics of the design. Uh, we need to verify our funding sources. And then with all that in hand, we can complete our final design. 
So thank you for hearing about our project in Pinal. All right, thank you. Thank you, Robert. All right, we'll move on to the last project on the list. Uh, thank you all for your uh, patience on this. We have um, MTC, at the MTC project, uh, Interstate 580 westbound open road, open road tolling and high occupancy vehicle lane extension project. I think we have, we have MTC staff available. Hi, um, this is Michelle Go. Can you hear me? Hi, Michelle. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Okay, great. Let me share my presentation. Trouble, hold on. Hi, my name is Michelle Go. I'm a senior planner with MTC, and I'll be presenting on the Richmond San Rafael Ford westbound I 580 um, open road tolling and HOV lane extension. Um, should I? This, uh, do you see the presentation? Yes, it's in full, full screen now. Thank full you. screen. Okay, great. So um, our project is a little different from the others you've heard about today because we are a freeway project um, and we don't actually have complete streets elements, but for the purpose of quick strike funding, we are required to review this project um, with the BPAC. Um, so just for a little bit of background on the ORT and HOV project, uh, we are viewing it as an extension of the RSR access improvement project, which, um, as you may know, it uh, implemented a peak period use lane in the eastbound direction uh, for uh, afternoon peak periods and a bicycle pedestrian path on the upper deck of the bridge. Um, and also, we are uh, working on implementing the Francisco Boulevard path on the right side. Um, and so what our project is trying to do is, um, oh, is look at strategies that can uh, improve, uh, preserve the use of the investments that we've made, promote the use of the investments that we made um, while addressing the westbound congestion in the AM that's still experienced by commuters. Um, and so we've developed a number of strategies related to promoting the use of the bike path. Um, and we're also looking at um, specifically for today's presentation, uh, the open road tolling and HOV lane extension, uh, which we're seeking quick strike funds for. Uh, so the extension we're looking at, um, the elements of the project are open road tolling, which would um, remove the existing toll plaza and add toll gantries. It would also reduce the number of lanes at the toll gantry, which would uh, uh, reduce the amount of weaving and merging that occurs approaching the, the bridge. Then we're also looking at about a five mile HOV lane extension, uh, which we would convert the general purpose lane, the inside general number one lane to an HOV lane. And we would do this only in the westbound direction uh, and looking at just the AM peak hours. Um, and so this qualifies for quick strike funding because it would provide transit priority for the Golden Gate Transit Transbay Route 40X, which currently doesn't receive any transit priority along this corridor. Um, and so uh, it would provide, it would create um, transit priority for this project. Oh, sorry, I'm having trouble. Um, 
So just to give a little more detail on the project. Sorry, don't know why it is not in the presenter. Okay, sorry about that. Um, oh. I'm sorry, my computer is having a mind of its own right now. I think we're back. Um, so as I said, we will be converting the number one general purpose lane. Um, and it, we're looking at a, an HOV lane to start at approximately Bayview Avenue, which um, will be to determined based on our traffic analysis. Um, and then at the toll plaza area, um, we will have a reduced number of lanes. Currently it's seven lanes at the toll plaza. We're, reducing it down to three lanes. Um, and then at Stenmark Drive, we're also looking at realigning the ramp for better um, distances for merging um, at the toll plaza. Um, and at, all along the corridor, there is um, Bay Trail that parallels the route. And at this particular location, the RSR bridge path uh, also is adjacent to this corridor. Um, so while this the ORT and HOV project does not have any complete streets elements, I do want to point out that we have been investing in this corridor. We've made a number of investments in the city of Richmond to help uh, close gaps in the bike network to access the bridge path. Um, we're also making investments on the Marin side. Um, and I believe we're recommended for funding for ATP funds um, for the Francisco Boulevard path completion. Um, and then we're also looking at a number of TDM strategies to promote uh, the use of biking across the corridor, across the bridge. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions when we are uh, in question and answer session. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for that presentation. So that concludes the, uh, the, 10, the 10 projects. Uh, thanks to all the presenters who, who presented. So next we're gonna go to, I guess, questions and comments from the committee. And I think what I'll do is go uh, project by project and see if anybody has any questions. So we'll start with the first project, the City of Lafayette and BART uh, project, the uh, Lafayette Town Center Pathway and Bike station, bike station project. Does anybody have any of the members have any questions or comments? All right, uh, we'll start with uh, Adam. I just had one question. It wasn't clear for me from the plans if the bike storage lockers that exist there would remain as part of the project. It'd be great to see those stick around or at least be relocated somewhere on that side of the station. I, I find those to be helpful to use in addition to the bike storage lockers. Uh, yeah, good question. The existing e-lock bike link lockers will remain where they are. All right, it had a, is it Margie? I think you had her hand up. Yes, um, thank you. I have a question about the wheelchair ramp that goes from the street level up to the station. Will there be any modifications on that? Because unless you have a power assist, it's very difficult to navigate that. So do you mean the, the switchback ramp that goes yep. currently between the two stairways? Right. I, I've even been there where I've had a police car follow me to offer to help push me up the ramp, which tells you it happens fairly often that people can't navigate that. Um, so, you know, the plans don't include any modifications to the existing ramp. I, I was uh, unaware that there were issues with it. Um, I can certainly talk to our accessibility folks and see what can be done there. I, I think, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely not part of this project. Um, I think it would be, 
you know, difficult and expensive to, to, to fix that. But um, I'll see what, what people are, have, have heard about it. Thank you. I'd be happy to talk to you offline also. If you want more. Thanks, Marty. All right. Any, any other questions for Heath or this project? Okay, I don't see any. Oh, okay, I see Ozzy. Hi, just a real quick one, Heath. Thanks for your presentation. Um, specifically to the bike station and the ramp, um, was there a conversation around the location of the station uh, immediately in front of the ramp and how that could potentially pose some security or safety issues with visibility of the ramp? Um, just trying to understand maybe why the location for the station there. Um, so, I mean, the location, there, it's, I mean, there aren't really any other spots for a structure of, of that size. Um, we also found the, the bike stations, we try to locate them as close as possible to the fair gates. Um, cyclists are pretty sensitive to distance. Um, uh, and if we want it to be used, it needs to be, you know, at the bottom of the stairs or, you know, ideally right next to the fair gates if we can get it there. Um, and, um, you know, this was reviewed by our security folks at BARD and, and, and our architects and nobody really raised any concerns about, um, you know, visibility or security. Um, so yeah, it didn't Okay, just a, just a question. I just go back to that, the slide you showed of the proposed location and, and just thinking about the height of the station and essentially is gonna block you to that ramp at least the beginning part of it. Um, so just a comment, um, but just overall great, great work uh, to increase the ped and bike access to that station. I remember the first time I walked up there thinking this cannot be how peds access the Lafayette Bar Station and in indeed it is. And so any updates and improvements to the area is much appreciated, thanks. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I might just ask just so I can understand, you know, uh, your questions about the the view there are you concerned that somebody uh, i mean that like there could be some security threat or nefarious deeds happening behind there or that somebody might hurt themselves and not be discovered or what what's the concern i think both of those just thinking about you know eyes on the eyes on the street whether that's for safety or the uh, ada issues that another member brought up um, just making sure there's eyes on 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 any access paths. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good point. It's worth considering. I mean, the one thing you know, just thinking that I might respond off the top of my head is that the area behind the bike station, while you know, the view of it will be, I guess, um, obstructed from the parking lot, you know, or from the sidewalk, it'll still be visible. You know, I should have front on view from either side, from the stairways, and from above. Um, so that's about all I can offer today. Thanks. Hi. Uh, this all, right. Is all right, Kristen. Kristen, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, I just have a quick question about, and not to get off on a tangent, but how is it that um, certain BART stations get bike stations in the first place? Is that a BART decision or did the city put up the funds to get the BART station, oh, uh, the bike station? That's a BART decision. So we, um, we, we keep close track um, of the demand and supply of, of secure bike parking at, at all the stations. And uh, we have, you know, so we we're constantly readjusting our, our plans uh, our, for, for what we'll provide where and actually moving some things around. But BART has a capital plan uh, for, for bike parking. And so it's it's planned ahead of time where we'll do bike stations based upon the demand there. And um, some places um, like West Oakland is one of the stations that we're planning on putting a bike station in as well. It's not as far as long as Lafayette station, but right now we have a lot of lockers there. Um, uh, but we see continued growth there with the, the, the transit oriented development project that's coming in. And so at some point um, as part of the TOD, they'll, they'll put in a big bike station and we'll have a bunch of lockers so that we can move around to some other stations. Yeah. Okay. Hi, just in the interest of time, if I, we could, if there's no other questions, if we can move forward to the uh, project number two, 
that's the uh, BART project in um, Pittsburgh Bay Point Station. And uh, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, do I see any hands raised? Uh, doesn't look like there's any questions. All right, if none, uh, we'll move on to project number three, City of Concord, East Downtown, uh, East Downtown Concord PDA access and safe routes to transit improvement projects. Um, actually, you know, Adam, I do see your hand up before uh, move forward because I, I see it on the, the video board here. I see uh, Bruce Olson's having issues with his, uh, I guess you can't hear me at all. So I guess I try to help him out here. But um, anyways, we'll, we'll um, Adam, you, you had your hand up. So you had a question for the Concord project. Yeah, yeah. So I thought we saw a lot of really thoughtful, carefully planned projects. And, and I know not every project's in a position to do the planning to be as advanced as some of these. Rum Rill is an example of what I think is just an exemplary project. This project to me was the, the least thoughtful of the ones we saw today. I, I understand and appreciate the limitations that may exist in planning and especially the Crick Strike project if you're trying to do it fast, but I, I wouldn't want to see an opportunity where a project could be much better with some minor modifications. It seems like this one was sort of just saying our constraint is we don't want to touch parking or vehicle lanes and we want to add sidewalks. It's an area where there are a lot of high speed arterials and, and I don't feel comfortable biking there. I wouldn't expect children to either. Given that you're close to a downtown, given that you're close to schools and on public transit, I think you can do better here. So I, I would suggest looking at, I believe Concord allows for bikes with 20 inch wheels or less in residential areas to be ridden on sidewalks. You're doing pretty much modern day minimum width sidewalks in an area that's near downtown and transit where I, I think you should try to go wider whenever possible. We saw both with the Danville project with the Rum Rill State Streets project, 11 foot travel lanes working fine. You didn't even seem to consider that as part of your project. When I looked at the travel lane widths for most of your sections, which aren't even shown on your plans, they're 12 feet or more. So I think trying a little bit harder to see, okay, I get it if the adjacent residents don't wanna get rid of on-street parking, can you make it a little narrower? Can you make the travel lanes a little narrower? For the safety of children and seniors, if you have a wheelchair going by and a bicycle, five foot sidewalks, six foot sidewalks really aren't ideal. You can make your project a whole lot better by seeing what inches you can pinch out of the travel lanes, pinch out of the parking and get yourself six, seven, eight foot wide sidewalks that would actually be usable and safe for children. Yeah. This is Eddie with RJA. Uh, thank you for your comment. We certainly will take a closer look at um, your suggestion with, uh, with the city. Um, as I mentioned that uh, um, we are in some cases going with a seven foot parking to be able to uh, accommodate for um, you know, the length width that we need. Um, it is going to be a little bit challenging, but something that we definitely will take a closer look at. Um, the reason why we're having um, issue with in additional widening um, is because, again, the uh, existing improvements along the residences, um, the, there's landscaping, there are fences, um, there's drainage issue as well as uh, conform issue relative to further widening. That is only some vertical difference uh, between the street elevation and the adjacent uh, properties. Um, but um, we'll definitely go back and relook at it a little bit more closely in terms of what we could do, um, you know, to um, kind of run with your suggestion in terms of whether we can widen the sidewalk a little bit more and squeeze a few more feet out to possibly, um, you know, how look at, you know, how we can make the bike lane work a little bit better. And just, just to add to um, just one point, want to make that this project actually was originally had funding, um, you know, from Measure J, uh, because the funding was poor, um, that we were, were hoping to, um, you know, trying to get the uh, quick strike funds where we can, uh, um, uh, for construction purposes, but the design itself um, is well underway, and, uh, and we have the funding to complete a design. So again, we, we will uh, take a closer look, uh, as you suggested. All right, 
Uh, thanks for that response, Eddie. Does anybody have else have any uh, comments, questions, or comments on the uh, this Concord project? Uh, Oli. Yeah, this is Oli Olson. About the Concord project, I would say, if you cannot fit in a bike lane and a somewhat narrow traffic lane, then do not build the curb and gutter and the sidewalk. This is not a suggestion, this is a mandate. Because if you build the curb and gutter and the sidewalk, we will never, ever get a bicycle lane there. So if you cannot move the curb and gutter farther away from the center line of the road, then boom, you're dead in the water. Five years from now, we are not going to rip out this new sidewalk to include a bike lane, but this is a very important bike lane kind of area. So stop designing, stop building, start rethinking, please. All right, thank you, Oli. Uh, any other questions on, and on this project? I don't see any other hands raised, so we'll move on to project number four, the city of city of Richmond, San Pablo Avenue, complete streets, phase two project. Any any questions on this one? All right, I see Corey. Hi. Um, so I don't have any questions, but I do have a comment, uh, and actually my comment goes for uh, the San Pablo project and the uh, 13th Street project, as well as the Rum project um, from Richmond and San Pablo. Um, I was I worked on these projects uh, when I was uh, part of Contra Costa Health Services, and I do just want to emphasize the amount of community input that went into this. Uh, it was you know really impressive. There were you know outreach efforts that were led by uh, the cities um, and. Uh, local government commission, uh, but also wanted to give a shout out to the first five groups um, who are really instrumental in gathering the community input. Um, a group of 30 or 40 uh, local parents uh, of young children, and they really helped us, you know, hit the concrete and bring in their friends and really pack the community input meetings uh, for all three of those projects. So I just want to say that they were, they were really well done community outreach projects. Thanks for that, Corey. Thank you. All right, thanks, Corey. All right, is there any other, you know what, given that I think there's some, uh, let's say here's some connections between, you know, projects four, five, and six, there's two city of Richmond projects and the San Pablo projects. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on those three, three projects? All right, Oli? Yeah, this is Oli again. I want to be assured that the bulb outs will have some kind of a ability for the bicyclist to get past. We don't want to have safety for the pedestrian and no safety for the bicyclist. I have no problem with a curb cut so the bicyclist can drive, ride over the curb cut, but on the side street and on the main street both, we need safety for everybody, not just the cars, not just the pedestrians, not just the bicyclists, but everybody, please. Your point is well taken, thank you. Um, and for the city of San Paulo project, I can just say that along Rumrell Boulevard, there's a striped bicycle lane outside of the bulb outs. So there's both. And the city of Richmond hired the same designer to continue the design from Rumrill onto 13th Street. And the um, San Pablo uh, phase two project does not have any bulb outs that would go into the bike lane. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other uh, questions, comments? I see Lamar has his hand up. Yeah, Lamar. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, adding on to the issue regarding safety for uh, bicyclists, um, I remember, I believe it was actually for the fifth one, for the 13th strength one, uh, that was mentioned of adding plant barriers to uh, protect bicyclists. Um, just adding on to that, is there like any way there can be like potential dual functionality for adding the plants as, you know, the safety and also for potential uh, water runoff as a form of sewer management? Uh, 
Yes, a bioretention is one of the elements of the, the landscaping. Got it. I just saw the pictures and like it didn't seem like it, but I don't know if those are reflective of the plants that actually be put on 13th Street. All right. Yes, uh, confirming, yes. I, I see a hand up from Bill. Yeah, uh, Patrick, is this considered part of the San Pablo Avenue multimodal corridor project? It would be good uh, if that's the case. Uh, I'd love to see more publicity about it. Uh, imagine traveling from Oakland to San Pablo on, on the safe uh, bicycle paths and so on. Um, or are you just calling it complete streets? Uh, Bill, I'm not sure if this segment of San Pablo is included in, in that um, study. I thought that was um, from Alameda County up to, yeah, maybe it does include it, but I believe this, the study that, that helped create this project predates all of that um, work on San Pablo. I yes, think. I'm confirming it was an environmental justice transportation planning grant that uh, was a project that was just the city of San Pablo and the city of Richmond to facilitate um, safer pedestrian and bicycle access for the residential communities in that area to places of employment and parks and, and Contra Costa College and such. It's not related to the, the major project, although uh, they're both on San Pablo Avenue and, and it's possible that there's some overlap, but they were developed independently. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I like the projects, both of them, so. And I'm, I'm going to um, cheat here, and um, no one asked, but I want to mention that uh, the San Pablo project is in a, a priority development area, um, and it is on the county most bike network. All right. Let me see if there's any other hands here. Sorry, I got to go through two screens here. All right, I don't see any other hands for, for these three projects. So thank you for, for the responses. We'll move on to uh, project number seven, the city of Danville, Diablo Road Trail and circulation improvements project. Does anybody have any questions for Andy? Uh, I think I don't see any, oops, sorry, let me. Dropped off from the uh, the Zoom here. All right, I do see a hand up from Oli. Uh, this is not a complaint. This is a compliment. This project has been a long time coming. Give them hell, Andy. Keep going. We need this. All right. Thank you, Oli. Thank Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Oli. All right. Do I see any other hands for the Stanville project? Okay. Don't see any other. Any more hands? So we'll move on to project eight, uh, City of Pleasant Hill, Contra Costa Boulevard Improvement Project. Anybody have any questions for Mario? Okay, I see Margie has a hand up. Margie? Uh, yes, I'm curious, um, how will that project that's going up Taylor connect um, Contra Costa Boulevard a little bit further up into that area where the police department, the Pleasant Hill Community Center, the YMCA are, will, because there's a very awkward path of travel from in that block. Well, that project that you proposed and that. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, very good question. Uh, this project does not. Uh, the city does have um, some additional uh, design work that's actually going on currently uh, to fund a uh, that closed gap as you head towards the police department, but this project is not um, encompass that, that scope of work. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, and I, I do see a hand from uh, Bill and then I'll go Oli after. So Bill, please. Well, uh, Mr. Marino, um, it, you certainly uh, gave me the impression that that's a very busy and dangerous street and the intersections are, are equally dangerous to war. Um, did you consider doing protected bikeways, class four bikeways uh, down that street? Currently it's uh, in the conceptual design. Uh, we haven't designed uh, the project itself. I think we'll consider a number of different options. And if we do have, if that's viable, I think, and if feasible, I think we should. Uh, but um, what we're trying to do um, 
is, is be consistent along the corridor. We've done some good improvements to the north and south, and this will close the gap. Um, I, I don't know if, 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 if that proposal to separate uh, would benefit um, just that one segment, but we can definitely look into it. Save a lot of bicycle lives if you do. All right. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, Oldie had his hand up as well. Yes, please. Thank you. I ride Contra Costa Boulevard regularly in both directions. And over the past years, the city of Pleasant Hill has been very good about adding bike lanes in both directions. Thank you for that. I would like to be assured in one sentence or maybe even one word that we're gonna get bicycle facilities all the way up to the limit line and all the way away from the limit lines of all directions in the Taylor Boulevard, uh, what you've been calling the Willow Pass Road intersection, but I think they've named that one block section Sun Valley Boulevard, but that's neither here nor there. Just assure me we're gonna get, we're not gonna get Sharrows in right turn slip lanes, but we're actually going to get green painted bike lanes in there, please. And we're talking about Contra Costa Boulevard, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for uh, Pleasant Hill staff here for Mario? All right, I don't see any other uh, questions here. Actually, my apologies. I actually have to step away for a couple of minutes. If uh, Vice Chair Pinkham, if you could take over for, for a minute or two. Vice Chair Pinkham. If you could take over, I have to step away for, for a couple of minutes here. You're muted, Bill. Brief, the classic um, Zoom mistake. Um, yeah, Bill, if you could take over for a couple of minutes here, yes, I'll yes, step out. So thanks. Yes. Um, and we're now at, <clears throat> excuse me, the city of Pano, um, uh, the new signal that APN Way and Marlesta. Questions? Dylan, going once. There is one. Oli. Yeah, it's me again. Ole Olson, Mr. Bicycle. So this signal, uh, I want assurance on this project, just like on the previous project, that we're going to get bike lanes all the way to the limit line, all the way away from the intersection, and that if you have bulb outs, there is some way for the bicyclist to negotiate the bulb outs without having to dart into the traffic lane. This can be either a separate bike lane right next to the bulb out or a curb cut so the bicyclist can go onto the, onto the bulb out. Yeah, that's, that's correct. The, bike, the travel lanes are narrowed to facilitate a bike lane along the bulb out's frontage. Perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, any more questions? No? All right, seeing, oh, oh Patrick's is great. Seeing none, um, let's move on to our last project, the Metropolitan Transit Commission sponsored project. Are there questions there? Anyone? Sorry, which, which one? This is the last one, Project 10, the Metropolitan Transit Committee. Uh, Transportation Committee Commission um, sponsored project, uh, Interstate 5, uh, 580 to on the West Lawn open road, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone? Robert, we're on the last, <clears throat> last one and asked the question and so far no response. All right, thanks. Yeah, I, I was uh, still listening, so. Oh, Thank no. you. 
nothing. Yeah. Uh, and thanks for handling chair duties for a second here. Uh, I oh. do see uh, Corey with a hand up. Yeah, yeah Corey has. One. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're supposed to like advocate for certain things or whatever, but um, just a, as someone whose job it is to encourage transit, um, you know, especially coming from Marin uh, without there being like transit priority on the bridge to connect to like the Del Norte BART station. Um, this project can really help a lot with, you know, prioritizing transit, doubling the amount of um, trips that are able to be taken by the, the 40 and 40 X, I believe those are the lines. Um, and just, I don't know, open world tolling, <laughs> it gets so backed up. Um, it's, it's something that West County, you know, can really use, so. All right, thank you for that comment, Corey. Uh, any other hands or any other questions? I don't see any hands up. All, all right, so I think we're finished with the uh, question and comment uh, portion of this item here. Um, question for uh, staff, um, Colin, do we, does CBPAC need to act on any of these projects or is it just uh, rev um, review and comment? Review and comment. All right, I think we're, we're done with that. So for uh, all the presenters here uh, today, thanks for uh, your presentations and hope that the feedback's helpful for you. All right, so we'll move on here to the next item, which is other business. Is there any other business or information that committee members or the staff would like to share? All right. I see it. I'll go first with uh, Bill and then Oli. Yeah, um, for those of you who don't know, and any of you might, <clears throat> uh, Bike to Work Day, of course, this year again will be Bike to Anywhere Day, and it's on May 21st. I don't know if um, we're going to get the canvas bags and so on like we did last year and fill them with virtual uh, gifts, but we'll, we'll see. I think Corey uh, um, will give a presentation on that when it's, uh, when it's time. May 21st. Anyway. Either. Right. Yes, and, and we will be getting Canvas bags. Last year, we partnered with the uh, Contra Costa Library System throughout the county. Uh, and in West County, we'll also be partnering with the Richmond Library System as well as some bike shops to be able to get the uh, Canvas bags out again. And uh, yeah, the digital goodie bag uh, it will be digital again. Great. I'm down to my last 20. All right. Thank you for that. I do want to mention one thing. And Please clarify if I uh, make any mistakes with this. I, I, I do recall uh, this year it's actually I, there is bike to work day on the twenty on May twenty first, but there's also bike to or bike to Weber days on the twenty first. But there's a bike to Weber days for the whole month of May as well. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make the uh, committee aware of that. Uh, Corey. Yeah, just one other uh, announcement. Um, so we uh, at 501 Contra Costa just launched a new program, uh, I think since the last time that we met here called Secure Your Cycle. So if commuters are interested in getting a bike link card, um, they can buy uh, and uh, get, we'll send them a $20 bike link card for free just to try it out. Um, and so that's 501cc.org slash SYC for Secure Your Cycle. So if you know anyone who's interested in trying out those lockers, uh, please send them that way. What was right. that link, uh, Thank you. Uh, it's 511cc.org slash SYC for Secure Your Cycle. And it's a great deal. Uh, that $20 will take you a long time to yeah. use. Uh, it, it, it's minutes and hours. So yeah, it will take a long time to spend that. <laughs> such a small fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and then we had a, we had a, uh, Oli had his hand up earlier. Sorry that, but that Oli. Yes, please. Oli Olson, East County's Mr. Bicycle. This is both uh, letter C and letter D, um, information sharing and upcoming subject for discussion, not to force the issue, but as you know or may not know, the McCullumy Aqueduct Trail bridge over Highway 4, which is located between Lone Tree Way in Antioch and Sand Creek Road in Concord, has been fully funded. It's in design. Uh, construction is going to start supposedly in April, be finished by the uh, fall. 
It's a $15 million project, and this is good. It connects the McCullumy Aqueduct Trail in Antioch with the McCullumy Aqueduct Trail in Brentwood. Okay, good. Now, about a half a mile to the south along Highway 4, we have a uh, the Sand Creek Trail dead ending right at the freeway. It would be wonderful to build a trail along the freeway between the McCullumy Aqueduct Trail Bridge and the Sand Creek Trail. Plus a funding opportunity, Caltrans has lots of shop, S-H-O-P-P -P money for construction of multimodal kinds of things along its freeway. So basically, I'm thinking all we have to do is urge the city of Brentwood and the CCTA to jointly apply and we can get this trail built pretty quick. All right, thank, thank you for that, that comment, Oli. All right. Uh, any other uh, other business or information for the committee members to share? All right. Uh, I see Corey. Right, one up. more thing I just remembered. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I, I didn't mention that we still do have e-bike rebates available from Farm One Casa. So if you know someone who's interested in purchasing a rebate, um, that is at 511cc.org slash rebate. Uh, we're offering $150. Uh, for uh, the purchase of an e-bike or $300 for those that qualify for uh, low income. Um, so yeah, free, free money for people who want to purchase e-bikes. All right. Thanks, Corey. I'll be, I'll be putting in my uh, application the next couple of days here. So I just bought an e-bike over the weekend. So, <laughs> all right. I see uh, Kristen has a question. Um, I just wanted to do some information sharing that um, 501 Contra Costa, you know, we do a lot of programs to promote transit and ride sharing and bicycling. Um, and this winter, we decided to do, as far as I know, the first uh, walking promotion um, to encourage walking for local trips. And so we started the Winter Walk Challenge, which is a kind of a companion new program to our successful summer bike program. Um, and I'm just happy to report that it's been extremely popular, extremely successful. We have nearly 650 people enrolled for 12 weeks, getting outreach emails from our team um, every single week. And out of 600 people, we've had three unsubscribes. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty neat. People are, are really enjoying this uh, chance to get out and have focused walks. Um, so it's been great. All right, thank you, Kristen. And I see, I think Oli had his hand up again. Yes, please. Uh, this is an information sharing item with the new regime in the White House now, probably there's going to be a lot of infrastructure money coming down the pike. So everybody should think about big expensive projects that we want to see built that involve pedestrian and bicycle stuff, not little piddly crosswalk rapid flashing beacons, but big bridges over freeways and bridges over flood control channels and bridges over railroad tracks, multi-million, maybe 15 or $20 million projects. Let's think big on this. We'll help our new president spend the money that he wants to. Um, everyone, if I may, I know that this is, um, uh, other part of the meeting, but Oli, um, thank you for that. And I wanted to mention that we have a huge need for a bridge in the city of Richmond to span the gap between the two halves of the Richmond Greenway. And we are actually starting a study funded by um, Caltrans Sustainable Communities to look at this issue, starting that this year. So hopefully we can wrap that up in time to find big ticket funding for this. Good, thank you. All right, uh, Bill. Uh, yeah, the thing we have to be careful about, uh, and I'd love to see projects like the Greenway and so on, um, is that uh, there's a kind of an overriding 
prejudice towards um, car oriented projects. And so, um, and with several of the, a couple of the climate uh, organizations I'm with uh, have picked up on this too. We've got to keep pressure on them to uh, get a fair chunk of that for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, otherwise, they're just going to use it mostly. I mean, that's great, Patrick, that we got that, but um, they're going to use it mostly for fixing potholes and three, freeway repair and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, if, talk to your local representatives. <laughs> um, city planners and what have you and you know let's let's keep the feds uh giving money to the really important things so anyway we just have to be aware all right uh thank you bill uh any other questions or comments all right uh the county i i, I do have one comment um, Sorry if it's sounding like I'm tuning the county's horn here, but the, the county recently received uh, ATP, uh, was awarded ATP funding for the uh, Bailey Road bike pen improvement project. So uh, Bailey Road, north of the BART station to Willow Pass Road. So I guess we're just excited because it's not every day that, you know, uh, the, uh, the county receives, um, you know, statewide ATP funds. So I just wanted to let the, uh, the group know. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, if there are no other questions or, or I mean, no other comments, we'll go to the last item here, um, upcoming subjects for discussion. Is there any other, any uh, topics that the uh, committees could suggest or Colin, if you, you're aware of any upcoming agenda items for the, uh, the May meeting? Right, there will see. be, there will be some complete streets checklists for review. Uh, in the next meeting, hopefully it won't be um, this many. I appreciate every, appreciate everyone's uh, patience with this packed agenda. It was because uh, nine of the projects were quick strike and in order to meet uh, MTC's deadlines, this was the only CB pack agenda day date that would have worked. So much appreciated. Um, but in terms of coming up, uh, Perhaps in May or July, an update on the pedestrian needs assessment that's ongoing countywide that CCTA is working on. Uh, and the, I mean, to your point of, uh, you know, larger infrastructure projects that support um, e-bikes and other things, um, there's the Caltrans District 4 bike highway planning study uh, which I can give an update on uh, in the next meeting if we want. Um, in addition to the MTC Regional Active Transportation Plan that's ongoing. Um, and MTC's legislative affairs person mentioned that an infrastructure bill is expected to pass before summer in terms of timing. Okay, um, thank you, Colin, for that update. Did anybody else have any final questions or comments? I see Bill, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, for a uh, subject for discussion. Um, uh, Richmond, as you probably know, is um, <laughs> going to have uh, an e-bike bike share program. God knows when it's been put off and put off and the company that was gonna do it got bought off by another one. And anyway, I won't go through details, but what, <clears throat> but concerned a little bit about it, it would be great if um, uh, nearby cities or <clears throat> many cities um, had such a program, just like the uh, non-electric bike share. Um, and it might be an interesting subject to explore. It doesn't have to be right away, but um, see whether any other cities are um, dealing with this or thinking about that kind of a program. Um, but connections would be really great. So, or at least promotion of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, Corey? I could just briefly touch on that. Yeah, and that's something that MTC is also interested in. So they, they might be interested in, in coming to talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. And then also not to promote our programs too much, but we're also gonna be offering free unlocks for the Richmond Bike Share. So um, you'll be able to use a promo code and, and try it out for free uh, when that does launch in the spring. 
I appreciate those promotions, Corey. Keep them coming. Um, just a question and maybe a comment for us new members. Um, how, typic how long do these meetings typically last? I'm just trying to plan out my schedule. And uh, you know, I understand maybe today was an exception, but um, it'd be great so I understand You know, we can plan for lunch and plan for afternoon meetings in there as well. So for us rookies, uh, it'd be helpful to get that information. I don't know if you want me to speak on that, Colin, but typically the meetings are, um, well, they're usually a, somewhere between 11 and one o'clock. And when we were actually um, in the boardroom, we would stop and have lunch. Um, and so it's a little different with COVID-19. So um, sorry, bear with us. We've been kind of just working through the same schedule. Um, sometimes they do end a little earlier than one o'clock, but um, depends on how many items are going. So We'll definitely be conscious of that next time. So just to FYI. I'm a little disappointed that DoorDash didn't bring me those sandwiches from the county. Yeah, I know. Those were nice, huh? <laughs> I appreciate that, Jackie. Just trying to plan out the schedule for the day. All right. With that, I think we are... I think we could conclude this meeting. So everyone, thank you for attending. Thanks for your patience with... Uh, all the items presentation. So um, yeah, I think we'll uh, wait for the, the May agenda and we'll see you.